As a student, I found that if I could memorize the arteries and their branches well enough to draw them out myself without looking, I'd have no problem identifying them on a dissection. What also helps is knowing where the arteries go, or in other words, what parts of the body they supply. You can trace the arteries to those parts to confirm their identification. So let's learn how to draw the axillary artery and its branches to make your life easier in identifying these vessels. Remember to practice drawing this after you've seen the video. Once you can draw it without looking at anything for help, you'll be ready to identify these vessels in your dissections. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll draw a curved tube to represent the axillary artery. Now this will be a right axillary artery, continuation of the right subclavian artery. For a link to my subclavian artery video, check the description below. Since this is a right axillary artery, blood is going to flow in this direction, from medial to lateral. The landmark for the medial boundary of the axillary artery is the first rib, so I'll label that first. For the lateral or lower boundary, depending on your perspective, the name of the vessel changes to brachial artery after it passes the lower border of the teres major muscle. Sometimes some people like to say the name changes to brachial where the subscapular artery branches off. Others like to use the anterior and posterior humeral circumflex as the lower boundary, since these vessels are usually the lowest branches off the axillary artery. Here I'm drawing the coracoid process of the scapula. The pectoralis minor attaches to the coracoid process and to ribs 3, 4, and 5 passing over the axillary artery. This is significant because the medial and lateral borders of the pectoralis minor muscle act to divide the axillary artery into three sections. We'll number those sections 1, 2, and 3. The first branch we'll draw is the supreme thoracic artery. Some people like to call it the superior thoracic artery. This artery will help to supply the first and second intercostal spaces. The next branch we'll draw will be off the second part of the axillary artery, the thoracoacromial trunk. The thoracoacromial trunk will have four branches coming from it. The clavicular artery, running toward the sternoclavicular joint to supply it. The pectoral artery, which runs with the lateral pectoral nerve under the pec major. The deltoid artery, which runs between the clavicular head of the pec major and the anterior edge of the deltoid, where the cephalic vein runs. And the acromial artery, which runs up toward the acromion process. Sometimes the acromial artery will branch off the deltoid artery, so watch out for that in your dissections. The second branch off the second part of the axillary artery is the lateral thoracic artery. This artery runs down the side of the rib cage, passing over the serratus anterior muscle, and runs with the long thoracic nerve. Off the third part of the axillary artery, we'll have a branch called the subscapular artery. This is usually the largest branch off the axillary artery. From the subscapular artery, we'll have a branch that wraps around the scapula called the circumflex scapular artery. It wraps around the back between the lateral border of the scapula and the teres major through the triangular space. The continuation of the subscapular artery is called the thoracodorsal artery. It travels inferiorly, running with the thoracodorsal nerve to supply the latissimus dorsi muscle. The other two branches we can draw together. One passes anterior to the surgical neck of the humerus. The other is often larger and passes posterior to the surgical neck of the humerus, running through the quadrangular space along with the axillary nerve. These two arteries will anastomose laterally. I'll indicate that by drawing a little diamond. These two arteries are the anterior humeral circumflex and the posterior humeral circumflex. It should be noted that sometimes these humeral circumflex arteries will originate from one stalk instead of two separate branches off the axillary artery. It's interesting to note that off the first part there's one artery that branches off. Off the second part there's two arteries that branch off. And off the third part, there are three arteries that branch off. So that's helpful to know. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.